Yo, it's Coach on today's video, I got the how to make a basic skill, uh, how to make a basic long range sword skill slash ability video. I was honestly supposed to drop this video back in September, late September, um, early October, I think. But I ran into an issue, couldn't figure it out, so I moved on to other stuff. At some point, I figured out how to fix it by doing something, by making something else. And then I came back to it uh, the last night, literally figured out the issue in five minutes. I felt sort of stupid, but it happens. Anyway, let's go ahead and get straight into the video. First things first, we're going to need a rig to test things on. You guys can click avatar, rig builder, insert the rig, and then head on over to replicated storage. You're going to need a remote event, so the plus icon, insert a remote event. Let's name this remote event combat event. I spelled that wrong. Combat event. And then inside of server storage, we're going to need our effects. Um, So I will have a link to both the effects and the animation because they're not mine. I have a link to both of them in the description so you guys can get them. Here's what the effect looks like. Uh, Let me find it. So here's what it looks like. So simply, you want to name it air slash or other properties just in case you're wondering and stuff. So you want to just name it air slash and then you want to insert it into a folder called effects right just create a folder click plus I plus icon and then insert a folder name that folder effects and then throw your effects inside and then leave that folder inside of server storage right and then of course we're going to need a sword it doesn't matter what your sword looks like you don't have to use the exact same sword as i that's why i didn't leave a link to it because it doesn't matter what type of sword you use and stuff it's up to you guys but yeah so let's go ahead and get straight into the scripting Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and insert a local script into our sword. We can go ahead and name this script combat script local. Then we can delete print hello world. Let me zoom in a little. Then I'm going to create three variables. First things first, we get the user input service. I'm going to say local UIS to get to game, get service, user input service. Then I'm going to get the combat remote events. So local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage wait for child combat event then i'm going to get the local player so local player is equal to game top players that local player then i'm going to set up the function i'm going to say uis dot input began connect function in parentheses i'm going to put input comma processed enter and i'm going to say if input dot user input type is equal to nm dot user input type dot keyboard and processed oh sorry and process is equal to false, which means the player is not typing a chat. And player dot character find first child script dot parent dot name, making sure that the player has the sword equipped, pretty much. And if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code, I'm going with e. You guys can go whatever key bind you want. Enter. We're going to say comment event fire server. We're going to send over a lot of information. First things first, we're going to set the name of the attack. So in quotation marks, we're going to put air slash. Want it to match the name of the effect in the effects folder and we'll say player get mouse dot hit we're gonna send over the c frame then we're gonna say player get mouse dot hit dot position then we're sending over the mouse position right then we're done the local script we can move on to the server script so let's go ahead and close this out insert a server script into server script service right and then we, we have our two animations here um so there will be a link for the uh this animation. Just search up knockback in toolbox and you'll find a knockback animation and stuff. So yeah. So just so just click the plus icon, insert an animation, uh throw your ID in there and then name it. And then once you've done that, just throw them inside of the script. And then we can go ahead and name the script combat script server. Then we can delete print hello world. Then we're gonna we're going to first create a variable for the twin service. So local Yes, I actually forgot to make, I actually forgot to get the sound effect for this video, not gonna hold you up, but you guys can just add that in, it's not really hard or anything. So game, get service, tween service, then I'm gonna get the debris service. I honestly don't even recall if I, did I use the debris, let me think, did I use the debris service? Oh, yeah, I did, I did. Because there's knockbacks, so yeah. Game, get service, debris, then I'm going to create a variable for the combat event, so local combat. Event is equal to gain the replicated storage with for child combat event. Then I'm going to get the effects folder. So effects is equal to gain the server storage wait for child effects. Then I'm going to set up the function combat event that on server event connect function. In parentheses, you're going to want to put, you're going to want to put PLR, which is the player event type arg1 comma arg2 comma arg3. All these are short for argument, right? Then we're going to create a variable for the player's character local character is equal to player dot character and also have an if statement i'm going to say if event type 
is equal to quotation marks air slash enter and then i'm going to create a couple variables first things first we're going to set up the tool local tool it's equal to argument one that's pretty much just referring to the sword and then i'm going to create one for the mouse c frame mouse c frame is equal to arc two and then the mouse position which is arc three so mouse position is equal to arc three then i'm going to set up the animation track local at is equal to character dot humanoid load load animation script regular brackets quotation marks find your air slash animation right once you find that you could do air slash animation or you could just do like event type event type dot 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 animation and then i'm going to say at play right then i'm going to set up the start position and position and duration so we can set up the tween so i'm going to actually sorry first i'm going to clone over the effect so i'm going to say local effect clone is equal to effects regular brackets quotation marks and then you're going to want to put uh sorry event type so, and then just clone on the outside once we've cloned that over we're then going to set the c frame effect clone dot c frame is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot c frame times c frame dot new or sorry not new angles c frame dot angles we can make sure it's facing the right direction zero comma math dot rad then we're going to say negative 40 then on the outside comma zero and then we're going to parent it so effect clone dot parent is equal to workspace and then i'm going to create a variable for the start position i'm going to say local start position is equal to character that humanoid root part that position then set up the end position local end position is equal to mouse position because it is a mouse guided attack then set up the duration local duration is equal to parentheses end position minus start position then on the outside you're going to want to say that magnitude divided by 60 right then i'm going to set up the tween i'm going to say local tween is equal to ts create effect clone for the instance then tween info dot new and then for the time we're going to put duration for the easing style went with cubic so easing style cubic and comma of course for the easing direction went with out and then we're going to go in between the parentheses put comma and then special bracket so we can create a property table and then all we're doing is just changing the c frame we're going to say c frame is equal to mouse c frame right then we're going to play the tween and once we play the tween let's go to skip let's skip a line then we're going to set up a function for if the effect is touched which means like it's made contact with a player you could also just use ray casting for this if you wanted but it's up to you so i'm going to say effect clone dot touched connect function in parentheses put hit let me just double check okay i'm good so so then i'm going to create an if statement i'm going to say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid right one we need to make sure it's either an npc or a player and hit that parent that name is nil equal to player dot name enter then i'm gonna here's where i add the knockback if you guys don't want knockback then you don't need to add this but i would assume you do though so i'm gonna say local attachment is equal to instance dot new attachment parent it to the so I'm just actually I'm just have a variable for the enemy character. All right, honestly, I prefer that. So I'm gonna say let's go up here and let's say local enemy character is equal to hit that parent. Just so we can differentiate between the two. So we're going to parent this to the enemy character's humanoid root part, right? Then I'm gonna create a linear velocity. So linear velocity is equal to instance dot new linear velocity parent is to the attachment. Then I'm gonna set some properties. Linear velocity dot max force is equal to five nine one two three four five. Wait. Oh no, I missed one. All right. Then I'm going to set the vector velocity. So linear velocity, that vector velocity. Make sure you pay attention to this. So in parentheses, I'm going to say character dot humanoid root part that position. Then this I'm going to say minus enemy character that humanoid root part that position. Now I could be wrong with this. Maybe I should be using the slashes position, like the slash effect, but I don't really see how that yeah, I don't really think that would work out that well. But you guys can mess around and see which one works best. 
I'm saying dot unit times vector three dot new zero comma zero and negative 20 because we don't need to play for like go flying or anything it's just a simple unless that's what you want of course the linear velocity then attachment zero is equal to attachment right then we're going to here's where we just add, add a little like ragdoll like effect i'm going to say enemy character dot humanoid root part dot anchored is equal to false then enemy character dot humanoid root part c frame is is times equal c frame equal to c frame dot angles then we're going to say map dot red 180 i'm a zero i'm a zero boom put a space in between let's go ahead and copy and paste this animation track so control c control oh sorry control v put it put two at the end then instead this time we're going to play the knockback animation so let's change this to knockback right and then once we set that up, we can destroy the effect clone. So destroy, right? Then we can use the debris service to add the attachment to it. So we're gonna say attachment, and then we're gonna destroy it after 0 0.1 second. Then I'm going to, you know, decrease by yourself enemy character dot humanoid dot health is less than equal to 10. Up to you guys for however much damage you want to do. And we're going on the outside right here. And then I'm going to say DS add item effect clone comma duration minus 0 0.2 right now the reason for this the reason for this is simply uh what's it called you guys see how if it makes contact with something it'll be destroyed now if it doesn't make contact this is just to ensure that it's destroyed right this is only just to make sure it's destroyed since it won't exist in this there would be no issue with this but yeah like if it's already hit a player but anyway let's go ahead and test this so it's gonna be it's gonna be real weird without a sound effect like some type of slashing sound effect or something but anyway so i have my sword here if i press e okay i tend to perform a rhythmic arithmetic sub on nil in vector um let's see let's see nil in vector oh i see so enter position is nil for some reason um let's see no, I did feel like I was forgetting something. Wait, because, yeah, I knew I wasn't tripping. Because one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Mm. Or maybe I'm not. Uh, this is weird. Okay. Let me see. Okay, so tool first. Mouse C frame, mouse position. And then for start position, it's character human root part position and position is equal to mouse position so mouse position is argument number three so it's the last one and yeah hit that position just to double check yeah let's perform our arithmetic sub on new magnitude hmm that's weird yeah duration is equal to end position position minus start position dot magnitude divided by 60. That's weird. I don't know why it's not working. That's weird, actually. Yeah, I don't know why it's not working. And before we can take sub on nil and vector, I think I'm just doing something. Let me see. Mouse position. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. So I sense. Oh, I said I did wrong. I said I did wrong. I knew I forgot something. I knew I forgot something. Okay, so go back to the local script, and then for the second thing, remember we're supposed to send over the tool. So script dot parent, um, it, yeah. Now I see the issue. It was out of order. That's the issue. Everything was being handled properly on the server side. I was just sending the information over incorrectly. I'm like, I'm like, I swear everything looks good on the server side. Okay, no property names. C frame for effects. This this is exactly why I test because I always know there's always a chance I can mess something up. Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, see, I accidentally put the name of the effects folder rather than rather than the referencing the effect clone. So make sure you fix that. Okay, let's see now. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. Boom! You guys see the slash? You see it's it's doing damage and it's not not going back. If you wanted to go back and to go back further, just adjust the uh, where is it? Right there, just that value. As always, if you guys want access to any of my scripts or models, 
uh, for any of my videos you guys can become either a channel member or a discord subscriber link to either one of those options can be found in the description below thank you guys for all the love and support i've been showing and stuff it's november it's my birthday month for sure let's try to get close to four thousand. i know i was in four thousand by the end of the month but like maybe like about well, three thousand six hundred subscribers by the end of november and stuff but yeah anyway thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you guys within the next, in the next video so see ya